Hey, what is going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be the first part of a two-part uh, series covering the onboarding and offboarding of an employee within your business. With that being said, this video will kind of be broken down into two parts. The first part we will cover creating a profile for our PowerShell. So in the future, we could add any functions or anything that we want to consistently uh, use on a regular basis. So maybe some scripts, some functions, um, some shortcuts or whatever the case may be, a default directory that will all be loaded up automatically every time we open up PowerShell using a profile. And then the second part of this video, quickly we will cover a PowerShell script that I had created real quick just to disable a user that we are no longer needing or who no longer needs access. Uh, that will be covered at the end of this video. Before we do get started, I would like to ask for those that are enjoying my videos, leave a comment, subscribe, like, show support. That would be greatly appreciated. But with that being said, let's get to it. All right, so like I mentioned, the first thing that we want to take a look at is our profile. So this profile will be loaded every time we open up PowerShell. Let's go ahead and do that on a using the admin powers. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is kind of just ask if this path exists. Actually, before we do that, let me explain the profile. So there's a variable that is built in called profile, and this will contain a path with the profile script. So Microsoft.PowerShell underscore profile.ps1. So let's verify that this path does exist. And if it does, we will edit it. If it does not, we will create one. So the first thing that we want to do is use the if statement. And we're going to say exclamation point, exclamation point, pretty much saying that if this does not exist, we're going to say if not test path. And then we want to specify the all right, we want to specify the path and then we're going to say profile so it's going to read in that variable that we just discussed a second ago and then let's go ahead and so if this path does not exist go ahead and create a new item and then we're going to do type file path and then we're going to again pass that profile And then we're going to force close it out and there we go now we know that this path exists we go ahead and do ise profile all right so i just totally forgot that the powershell ic is already open at the bottom so here we go now we have our profile so in here we could edit our default configuration for powershell so the first thing that we want to go ahead and do is well that i would like to do is configure a default directory as to where we will store our scripts that we will use most often uh, so in this case i had created a scripts folder in the documents and then here's one script that i had already recorded and i will release this video next week but this is the folder that we want PowerShell to open up to so we could run these scripts without having to change directory and so on. Let's go ahead and specify that first. So we'll say with a comment, we'll say set default location. And then we'll use the set location commandlet. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste. We'll save that. And just to prove it, so now next time I open up PowerShell, as you can see, we are now in that scripts folder. So let's go back in there and we will do two more things. All right, so the first thing is gonna, or the first part of this is gonna be creating the first alias. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify that here. Gonna use this commandlet i'm going to say onboard for this video this doesn't really matter but we'll go ahead and just specify it now so if we do run this next week we could go ahead and highlight that and then we'll do one more for the offboard 
it does not exist yet, but we'll just go ahead and call that disable.ps1 and we'll save that. For those that aren't familiar exactly what this means, I will show that now. So if we went in here and ran this commandlet, you can see all the various uh, aliases that are relevant to this PowerShell. So as you can see, they're pretty much just a short way of saying so, uh, a command. So CD equals set location commandlet. Uh, what's another one? CLS right here is clear host. So if we go ahead and reopen this, we should be able to see the ones that we were looking or the ones that we just created. So there you go, you see off board and then somewhere in here you should obviously see on board. So there's on board and off board. So those are the two aliases that we had just created. And now we could go ahead and develop that script. So this week, instead of actual typing out the script, I already have it pulled up and uh, I did it previously, but I will just go ahead and read it line by line so you guys understand exactly what is going on. And then I will prove that it works and that will conclude this video. So the first thing, as you notice here, is we created a variable called you disable. So user disable. We're going to use the read host commandlet, and then we are going to prompt the person who is using the script to enter the username. Then the next part is we are going to verify that the user exists, and if not, handle that error. So we create another variable called user. And then we are going to use the try and catch. So it's similar to maybe Python or any other programming lang language or scripting language that you are familiar with. It works kind of the same way. And we are going to say get 80 user and pass through this variable here, you disable. If that user exists, we will proceed. If it does not and it throws an error, it will catch that and assign a null variable or null value. On the next statement or in the next line, you can see that we have an if statement and that is going to cover that if that user is not null, so if there was no error, do the following function. So we will use the disable ad account commandlet and then we will specify the identity using with the uh, you disable variable. Then we will prove that that account is now disabled by using the get ad user commandlet with the identity, this should be you disable. And then we are going to select the object, the same account name, and then the enabled object. If the user was in fact null, meaning that there was an error, the user does not exist. And that's what we will print to screen. It should say, I don't know why I don't have it here. Right host. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's place this script in our scripts directory so we could use our alias. So I already have it in the downloads folder where I was creating these. Go to the documents. Place it in here. So now if we go ahead and do off board. I had changed it. Uh, let me go ahead and change that to disable that PS1. All right, let's try that one more time. Go ahead and bring this up here. All right, so it's saying enter username. So we use cyber.me. As you can see, cyber.me enabled is now false. Let's go ahead and just uh, we'll go ahead and enable it and we'll run that again. So we'll go. Um, set ad user let's go ahead and get ad user just to prove that it is And as you can see here, enable is now set to true as that is what we just set. So if we run our script one more time, just to highlight that off board cyber.me it is now set to false. So if we open up and get all the properties of that user, you can see his account is now false and that user is no longer able to log in. Now the other part of that script was just to verify 
that or error, error handle handle the errors based on if it cannot find a user so let's go ahead and run off board with a user that does not exist user does not exist all right so that is it for today's video i hope you guys were able to learn something with this offboarding script and the creating the profile next week we will release another video but it is uh, for onboarding so if you get a new employee instead of having to open up the various prompts and inputting the username password description office phone number and all that stuff go ahead execute your powershell script that is opened up already in your profile and then type in uh, a few prompts and you are good to go everything is already automated and it will be placed into the group that you specify and that will all be covered next week um, and that is it for today so with that being said as always never stop learning